Hello my beautiful co-creators, Lilu here. Today I'm at the Chi Center on a juicy living tour and I found a juicy, juicy lady that recovered from Parkinson's disease. Wow, this is so awesome to meet somebody that freed themselves up from such a very, how would you qualify even this disease? I said my body was in prison. Yeah. That's what it felt like more and more. Wow, so you, and now you feel free. Very free. The, bu <laughs> the butterfly is out of the cocoon, has sprung and is soaring. Wow, and this is thanks to Qigong because actually this weekend we were at this retreat, Qigong retreat, sound healing with Mick Tong, that I will be interviewing also today. Um, through those practices, it has literally changed your life. So let's first back up. Tell us about the Parkinson's disease. What, what, what is it? It is a movement disorder, and so um, parts of the body that you would expect to move freely do not, and parts of the body that you would want to be still are not. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of other things going on with the autonomic nervous system that the general public probably wouldn't know about or see mm -hmm. somebody with Parkinson's. So when you were diagnosed Parkinson, how long ago was that, first of all? It was in April of 2008. And at the time of diagnosis, it was determined that I had probably had the disease for six or seven years prior because of um, all the other symptoms I had had that I didn't realize were part of Parkinson's mm -hmm. that I had just been dealing with. So then they put you on heavy medicine, huh? I was, well, yeah, the, uh, I was put on um, the dopamine drug Cinemet. Um, three times a day, Cinemet 25100, three times a day. And then when I was still having problems, I was given the drug uh, Requip XL also on top of that. And um, I could have upped the, the dosage of the medication when, my, when things got even worse. I was turning a corner, it was getting worse, and I could have upped the dosage and really didn't want to do that. And that's exactly when Qigong came into my life. And, and you were staying there in bed for, for or, or in your couch for hours, really, your brain. You were not living a very juicy life, was it? No, I was, I was trying to keep my brain busy reading and researching everything I could about Parkinson's, which is actually how I came across Qigong the first time, read about it. And um, what I had read uh, said that um, all kinds of exercise are good for Parkinson's, but that Qigong is the best. And I didn't even know what Qigong was, and it took months for me to find it. <laughs> so how would you, what is Qigong for you? How do you see it now? I see it as my spiritual being brought home. Before anything physical or anything else, that's all very nice that I was healed from Parkinson's, and that's wonderful, and I'm eternally grateful. But I feel that the place where I was born as a child, um, that, that mystical, wonderful place that, that very often the conscious world makes us push aside, I've returned, and I feel very much at home being myself and being in touch with the higher consciousness, which is bringing fulfillment through me. You have so much peace and love and joy emanating out of you. Do you think that has anything to do with you recovering from uh, Parkinson's? I think, I think the confidence that was always there has now sort of burst, and, and yes, yes, I do. Um, uh, I know that I have this spiritual source that I can tap into, and I'm never alone. This is so different than how we're raised, huh? This yes. is so different. What did you have to overcome to kind of let go and, and just allow yourself to be healed through this method? Because I guess as a patient, you have a big par part, um, big part of responsibility in your own healing. Not just the method. The method can work or cannot work, depending on how you're, what is your attitude towards it no? do you mean what what how did I succeed in Qigong yeah um, I, I think that I think that my higher consciousness was always there I remember having a conversation with my stepmother and she asked me how I was doing and I usually tried to keep up a, a really positive image because I really wanted to put out positive messages for my own good as well but every once in a while I'd get honest with somebody in the family and I said well it's not getting any better. This disease only goes in one direction. Mm -hmm. And right after I said that, something inside of me said, that's wrong and you know it's wrong. And I didn't forget that, that I had gotten that message somewhere from myself, but from some part of myself that I didn't know. And I think that was a very strong message that I brought with me to Qigong. And so the in minute I started the first practice of lift chi up, pour chi down, I started feeling some relief from the pain of Parkinson's. and. Um, 
I think that it's, uh, you know, and then, and then just from there, that belief just got stronger and stronger. So how did that healing yeah, progress? You, it started slowly and then you start immediately seeing something and then uh, slowly you were saying that you got rid of those medicines, huh? Yeah, it actually it was rather dramatic in that uh, June 19th, 2009 was my first uh, Qigong weekend. And um, then uh, and I started feeling relief right away. And within six weeks, six or seven weeks, I was off all Parkinson's medications, both oh. th both the, the drugs, and still had uh, some tremor and some of the symptoms, but they were really abating. Um, and how I got myself off the medication was that I started to forget. And at first, <laughs> at first I was panicked. Oh, I forgot to take my medication. Then I thought, wait a minute. My body used to remind me by tremoring, by hurting. It's not reminding me. Maybe my body's telling me I don't need it. So I gradually got myself off the medication. This is so amazing. You're, you're a living miracle. Like I said, like Einstein said, either everything's a miracle or nothing's a miracle. And I always chose to believe that everything's a miracle. So it was interesting because at some point uh, he told you, the teacher said, well, you have to do three hours, <laughs> right? Are you committed to do three hours? What was your response to that? Uh, my first response was, at first I thought, oh, this Qigong is great. I can do this lift you up, port you down half hour a day and I'm going to feel good. And, and then when I heard three hours, th actually the steam started coming from my ears. And I was like, I didn't sign up for this three hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, but then I, I settled down for a few minutes and, and I... I thought, wait, this is a no-brainer. What's better, three hours a day of Qigong, and then I go on with the rest of my life, or 12 hours on the sofa, feeling terrible and getting worse? So that True. was, yes. Yeah. And, and the three hours fits into my life beautifully. And I bet it has transformed not just your health, but so many different aspects of your life, huh? Absolutely. Everything seems to be going better for me. And, and as I said, uh, recently Ming Tung related um, the Qigong belief system with the law of attraction. And, uh, and I see that connection very strongly. And um, in recent weeks, I've really seen it come into play. So, yes, every... So you're saying you're attracting wonderful, juicy things in your life? Yes, huh? yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and, and uh, every day is more exciting than the next. Whoever thought that a retired person would be having so much fun? And a person who was supposed to be retired and sick. <laughs> you have like a second chance, huh? Yeah. So now you're giving this back to others. Any way that I can, I would love to give it back. There's, you know, any, anybody who can come to Qigong and find their health and the restoration. Yes. Yeah. So, so you practice how long now? What's what's your daily kind of routine with Qigong? Do you still do it? Yeah. Oh, obviously. Yeah, I'll do it for the rest of my life. Um, and I practice a minimum of three hours a, a, a day if I'm not working. Um, I did retire from teaching earlier than I had planned because of the Parkinson's. And I still have some teaching in my system. So I go in and substitute teach and love it. And on days when I'm working, um, two hours a day of Qigong, and then I get in more if I can. But um, I was telling Celine that I also bring uh, Qigong into the classroom with me um, and set up a chi field. I try to get there early and set up a chi field. And um, I'm having a great time substitute teaching. And most substitute teachers, unfortunately, don't have that much fun. <laughs> so <laughs> so how do you do that with others in your classroom? Um, well, I get there. I try to get there early so that when no one is there, I'm working with the chi and doing practice. Yeah, yeah. And then there are subtle ways of when the ch students are working, I'm walking around their desks and I'm, and I'm, and I'm um, emitting chi and taking in chi um, through the ways that I learned from Ming Tang in terms of um, la chi and fa chi, uh, different, different forms of the qigong practice. Wonderful. And tell us, uh, finally, how, what, is your, what do you want to say to people that have Parkinson's or other diseases that right now traditional medicine have not found a solution to? I mean, what's your message? What's your calling? My message your is, call? <laughs> thank you so much for allowing me to do this. My message is that there is hope and that the answer is within you and that you have the strength. And um, I wish you all the best. Haola. Haola. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bianca. <laughs> Isn't she so juicy, my beautiful co-creators? This is this is another juicy story. There's so many of these, and this is their solution. There's really wonderful things happening in the world. Thank you so much. I feel so relieved. <laughs>
I'm sending this message through the heart of mine Connecting to that special place where my heart is open space Can you hear my song? Can you hear my song? Desire to control and form is fading away like a peaceful storm Gentle wind is blowing inside, melting hotness Just the sweetness of love will survive The sweetness of love will be my guide Can you hear? Taking a stronger stand for myself Have you noticed? It's necessary for my survival and my health Have you noticed? Something inside of you change every day Have you noticed? Only ignorance stand in your way Can you hear? I'm your mother, I'm your mother, Earth, I'm your son Choose to look the other way to ignore me. They'll continue to be surprised by the impact on their lives. Have you noticed? I'm taking a stronger stand for myself. Have you noticed? Your heart will lead your way. There'll be no more. The earth at your service a new thinking will be how can I serve how can I respect how can I serve the earth can you hear I'm your mother I'm your mother earth I'm your mother I'm sending this message through the heart of mine Connecting to that special place where my heart is open space Can you hear my song? Can you hear my song? Desire to control and form is fading away like a peaceful storm Gentle wind is blowing inside Melting hotness Just the sweetness of love will survive The sweetness of love will be my guide Can you hear?
Have you noticed? I'm taking a stronger stand for myself. Have you noticed? It's necessary for my survival and my health. Have you noticed? Something inside of you change every day. Have you noticed? Only ignorance stands. We were at this retreat, Qigong retreat, sound healing with Mik Dong, that I will be interviewing also today. Um, through those practices, it has literally changed your life. So let's first back up. Tell us about the Parkinson disease. What, what, what is it? It is a movement disorder, and so um, parts of the body that you would expect to move freely do not, and parts of the body that you would want to be still are not, that I didn't realize were part of Parkinson's, mm -hmm. that I had just been dealing with. So then they put you on heavy medicine, huh? I was, well, yeah, the, uh, I was put on um, the dopamine drug Cinemet um, three times a day, Cinemet 25100, three times a day. And then when I was still having problems, I was given the drug uh, Requip XL also on top of that. And um, I could, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of other things going on with the autonomic nervous system that the general public probably wouldn't know about or see mm. with somebody with Parkinson's. So when you were diagnosed Parkinson, how long ago was that, first of all? It was in April of 2008. And at the time of diagnosis, it was determined that I had probably had the disease for six or seven years prior because of um, all the other symptoms I had had. Parkinson's disease, wow, this is so awesome to meet somebody that free themselves up from such a very, how would you qualify even this disease? I said my body was in prison. Yeah. That's what it felt like more and more. Wow, so you, and now you feel free. Very free. The, bu <laughs> the butterfly is out of the cocoon, has sprung, and is soaring. Wow, <laughs> and this is thanks to Qigong, because actually this weekend we... Can you hear my song? Can you hear my song? Hello my beautiful co-creators, Lilu here. Today I'm at the Chi Center on a Juicy Living Tour and I found a juicy, juicy lady that recovered from Parkinson's.